Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Do you know what time it is? Tube microphone review time! Today, I am reviewing the Rode NTK. This microphone costs about $530. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description. I did buy this with my own money. All of my recording settings will be listed in the doobly-doo as well as the description. And now let's talk about what comes in the box, but you know I can't throw this, so we have a stand-in box. As you saw, you get this very nice hard shell storage case. You'll get the microphone, a microphone clip with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a very long 7 pin XLR to XLR cable, the required power supply and the necessary power cable, some documentation, and a sticker. Then as far as the build quality, this microphone feels pretty darn good. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which does have a tiny bit of give to it. As we go around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches, and on the bottom you will find the 7-pin XLR port. Then we have the power supply, which is quite chunky. It is all metal and feels incredibly robust. On the front, you have a power switch, which has a nice ka-chunk to it when you turn it on or off. On the rear, you have the plug to connect this to your wall. You have a 120 or 240 volt selector. I had to change mine to 115 to avoid some very nasty hum. You have the 7-pin XLR microphone input, a 3-pin XLR microphone output, and all of the connections on this feel very good with minimal play. I'll go ahead and show me wiggling them a little bit to show how sturdy they are. And just in case you care, this microphone is made in Australia. I'm not going to read all of the specs to you, but I will have them up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look at any of the graphs, or if you want any of the other specs, I will have them listed in the description as well. Now I am spinning around the NTK to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's see how this microphone handles plosive rejection. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto, please. Now I am right on top of the NTK to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the NTK, about two feet away from the NTK, and about four feet away from the Rode NTK. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the Rode NTK sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here is how the NTK sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Now I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shock, so we'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. I'm also incredibly annoying, so I am going to tap on the body of this microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Next, I want to include a quick side-by-side -side spoken word comparison of the Rode NTK running through a couple of outboard preamps. First up, I have the Warm Audio WA73 EQ, input gain set at 45 dB, output at 0 dB, 24-bit 48 kilohertz. Then on the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, I have the compressor stage bypassed, but I have the input set at plus 5, and then the level set at about 6.5, again running line level plus 4 dBU into the Universal Audio X8, 
recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. It looks as though I have level matched them as close as I possibly can in the analog realm, but I will verify in post, and I will have been switching back and forth quite a bit to let you hear the difference. Which one did you like better? Let's go on. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple of other microphones that are available so we can hear how this stacks up against the competition and understand how it sits within the microphone marketplace. Starting on the microphone that we're reviewing, I am six inches off running directly into the Universal Audio X8, 36 decibels of gain, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. Let's jump to the first mic. Starting on the Audio-Technica AT2020, this is an XLR solid-state condenser microphone. I am six inches off. My gain is still at 36 decibels. This costs about $100, and here is how it compares to the NTK. Back on the Rode NTK for a palate cleanser, here is how it's sounding. Let's hear another microphone. Now I am on the Neat King B version 2, which is another XLR solid-state condenser microphone. Microphone. Still 6 inches off, gain still set at 36 decibels. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, but this microphone costs about $170, and here is how it sounds compared to the Rode. Let's do some more. All right, I am back to clear out your ear holes again. This is the Rode NTK. Nothing has changed. Let's hear some more mics. Now I am on the Rode NT1 5th Gen, which is an XLR and USB solid state condenser microphone. I am six inches off running into the X8, gain still set at 36 decibels. This microphone costs about $250, and here is how it sounds compared to its tube big brother. Let's do some more comparisons. Back on the microphone we're reviewing, nothing has changed, but make sure to check the lower third and let's hear the fourth microphone. Now I am on the Ava N-Tone CV12, which is a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. I'm on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter engaged, six inches off, gain set at 36 decibels. This goes for about $400, so a little bit cheaper than what we're reviewing. And here is how it sounds compared to the NTK. Let's jump back to it. All right, we are at the midpoint of the comparison section, I believe. So here is the midpoint palette cleanser on the Rode NTK. Let's go to the next one. Next, I am on the Rode NT2A, which is a multi-pattern XLR solid-state condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid mode, no pad, no filter, six inches off, gain set at 36 dB, check the lower third. This microphone costs about $400, and here is how it sounds compared to the NTK. Let's do a bunch more, a couple more comparisons, please. I always run out of things to say, but this is the NTK. This is a palate cleanser. Listen to my voice and let's go to another microphone. Next, I am on the Rode K2, which is a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. I am six inches off. I am on the cardioid polar pattern. I still have 36 decibels of gain. This microphone costs about $700. And here is how this compares to its little brother, which is cardioid only. Let's do some more comparisons. I have no idea how many of these I have done, so here is the Rode NTK to drill into your ear canals and clear them out, and let's hear another one. Now I am on the MXL Revelation 2, which is another multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. Again, I am on cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. Six inches off, gain set at 36 decibels. This microphone costs about $800, and here is how it sounds compared to the NTK. Let's go back and do a few more comparisons. I believe this is the penultimate palate cleanser on the Rode NTK, so get a good feel for it. Six inches off, 36 decibels of gain, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. Let's go to the second to last mic. Next, we are on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann U87AI. This is another XLR multi-pattern solid-state condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad and no filter. 33 decibels of gain, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. 
This microphone costs about $3,700. That's it for this comparison. Let's jump back to the NTK and do one more comparison. What? Back on the Rode NTK for the final palette cleanser, you can guess what the final microphone is going to be. Let's jump to it right now. We are finally on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. U67 reissue. This is another multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. Connected to the X8, gain at 36 decibels, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. Did I cover everything? This microphone costs about $7,900. That's stupid. But... <laughs> But here is how this compares to a microphone that is less than one-tenth the cost. How do you like it? How does it compare? That's it for the comparison section. Let's move on. I love the movies And I love my popcorn And I love the 90s I wish I could live there once again I missed the last note by an eighth note, but who cares? That's good enough. That's the music test. Can you tell my personality is purely nostalgia? I don't think anybody has noticed yet. Let's go to the conclusion, please. I understand this microphone's about 20 years old, and yes, it has been sitting on my shelf for about four years, but at least I'm getting around to reviewing it now, right? But for the price, this is not bad at all. And first up, as far as pros, for a tube microphone, having a self-noise of 12 dBA is quite impressive. It also has a max SPL of 158 dB, which is absolutely bonkers. I found the off-axis coloration on this thing to be relatively inoffensive as well. I also found the background noise rejection on this to be pretty respectable, and when it comes to build quality, this thing feels fantastic, and there is absolutely no resonance when you tap on this thing. It feels way better than it ought to for the price. And then as far as cons, the microphone comes with the mic clip, but I would love if they threw in a shock mount as well. This microphone also has a lot of treble and air, and on certain sound sources that can get a little bit sharp sounding. And I know I am being nitpicky here, but the light on the power supply is blinding. I will shut off the light so you can see how bright this thing is. Look at this thing. It's absolutely insane in the camera. It looks like some kind of UFO flying around. It's going to get you. It's way too bright. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Rode NTK? As far as the overall sound, I would classify this as a very clear sounding microphone. You're not getting the most robust low end. Then you're getting a relatively neutral mid section with a slight lift in the upper mids. Then you get a boost in the treble and air, which is what is most dominant in the frequency response here. And it gives it a really open and airy sound. On the electric guitar, I think this is perfectly functional if you want a lot of treble and air to your recording. It gives you a little bit of shimmer on the clean guitar, which can be quite nice. On the acoustic guitar, it is bright, it is detailed, it is articulate, it is exciting sounding. I think if you like that sound profile, this microphone works really well. 
For singing vocals, I think that's my favorite application for this microphone because the top end is so detailed and clear sounding without sounding over boosted and without sounding too harsh. And finally for spoken word, it's not my favorite here. It's not the most robust in the low end. The mids are clear, but I think the big boost in the treble and air is a little bit much for a voice like mine. If you have a deeper voice or your voice doesn't have as much top end information, it may work better for this application. But for me, I wasn't too keen on it. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Rode NTK in 2024 for some people? If you like the sound of this microphone and prefer it to the alternatives out there, I don't have any deal breakers for you, so I would say go for it, because for a tube microphone of this caliber, I think the price is more than fair. You're getting a low self noise, an incredibly high max SPL, that really clear sound that plenty of people like, and the build quality of this thing is fantastic. Now the reason I'm saying I would only recommend this for some people is for my money, if I was shopping the Rode catalog, I would lean towards the Rode NT2A for a solid state microphone. I like the sound of it and you get a bit more versatility with multiple polar patterns, high pass filters and pads. Or if I was looking for a Rode tube microphone, I prefer the sound of the K2 because it's not as bright in the upper frequencies and I am partial to darker microphones. But if you aren't like me and you like the bright sounds, more power to you. My air conditioning just turned on and that is a message from God that it is time to end this video. Thank you for coming by. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. Thank you so much to the members of this channel. Their support allows me to buy this gear to review. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, boop.